Speaking freedom. Speaking freedom. Giving you the answers to be free. Be free. Be free. Cause we're speaking freedom. And we're live online from KC. understand this? Do you really get how you are energy? Energy is flowing through you right now. Energy is around you right now. You are moving in energy. You are driving your car in energy. Okay, so part three. I diverted away from the African music, not because it's not relevant for right now, but because I wanted to speak on the narrative of your soul and the energy of your spirit. Okay, so videos part one and two. I was talking about Kanye West, a video that I seen from a TikTok reel or creation video or whatever that talked about how the devil is or Satan is the angel of music, which in both video one and two, we dispel that it is nowhere in the Bible that says that he is the angel of music. It is nowhere in the Bible that depicts that at all. And in those videos, I also talk about the history of indigenous and African culture and how we've created so much and how a lot of times the things that we see here and understand as being demonized or because demon actually means genius, the things that we hear about being evil based on ego is not actually what it appears to be on surface level because if you go and study it it'll mean something a whole lot different than what the narrative that we've been given so within saying that i started talking about religion and how a lot of stuff is used in order to control you and in the last part of the last video part two I specifically talked about how the energy of our souls are real, how I wanted to go to different places to experience the vibrations of the energy in those spaces, because I believe that every place has an energy. It's like you can walk into one place and you can feel light and you could feel like, oh, this is a breath of fresh air. And you can go into another place and you feel like heaviness and the weight of the world is on your shoulders. So energy is a real life thing. So I started this video with that little piece and actually was led to some other videos that I'm going to watch in my own personal time about the soul and soul energy. But okay, so let's get into it. I do have something that I want to read. I looked up something that sounds good that would be good to share hopefully this is not another 40 minute video because part one and part two are 40 minutes long part three that was just the intro that was the intro and part two i started talking about how energy is real so the reason why i said that is because when you go to churches or any place where people are in energetic alignment with each other then the spirit and presence of that energy amplifies itself. So that's when you get people that are able to be in worship settings and cry and experience the essence of God's energetic field within their mind, soul, and life in that specific time. So in the place where the Bible says when two or three are gathered in his name, he is present. Now imagine the energy of two or three people holding hands, believing the same thing. Now amplify that by 200 amplify that by 5,000, amplify that by like what you see in some of these mega churches of 40, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 people or conferences that bring out that many people. That energy in that place is real. So this is going to ruffle somebody's feathers. Regardless if the person on stage is anointed or not, anointed meaning has the presence energy and essence of God regardless if that person is actually anointed the anointing that's in that place will begin to be upon that person because the energy level of the place will rise so high that the person will be able to feel that energy and feed off of 
the energy of the people in the room, the energy of the people that is in alignment and in belief with that. So when you believe in something, it becomes stronger. And the more people you can get to believe with you makes that energy stronger, makes manifesting more real, makes the light of God shine brighter than anything that you could really imagine when you're in those places. So when we come together and gather for the sake of love, life, and anything beyond that, that energy field is very, very real. Like that is not fake. So when you go to Jerusalem or any place that is thought to be spiritual, especially when it comes to Christianity and religion, you are going to feel the essence of God there because all the people that believe has brought that energy to that space. Even if that was not a real place in which God's grace was felt, if you get enough people to come there and bring that spiritual energy into that space, then the awakening of the essence of that space will begin to birth a peace, a solace, a grace, just like if you go somewhere and a bad energy and a whole bunch of negativity, it's going to feel like the devil. It's going to feel like hell. It's going to feel like torment because that's the energy that is being manifested through the lives and the people that are in that place. So whatever energy you bring is the energy that you make. So the more people that bring positive, good energy, the more you will see positive and good things in that space. And I'm saying that because we carry the light of God. We carry the assembly of God. We are the church, the people, the body, wherever we are in belief and in agreement. That's what grows. That's what shows. And that's what the people will know. I want to let you know how powerful we are as energetic beings and how we have to recognize that in order to transform that into what we want to manifest and see in the world. I have something that I want to read is from energyfieldmastery.com and it says soul energies know your soul energy profile now i'm not reading all of this but i am going to read some of it and as i read it i will stop and break down what it means to me you may know a lot about yourself your skills talents attitudes character traits your quote unquote buttons your preferences and a lot more but do you also know the main soul energies what you are made of energetically probably not time to change that this is what this says this is not me i mean it's me reading it but i'm reading their words the key to living the life that you desire is to make choices that are in line with who you are at a soul level so when i talk about alignment it's really basically what this just said the key to your life and living the life that you are supposed to live is based in soul alignment and therefore it is vital to know at least your primary and secondary soul energies those determine what you are made of energetically if you express your main soul energies you are most abundant in it's much easier for you to manifest your goals and visions to manifest abundance on all levels of your existence only then are you creating and manifesting in line with your soul's highest path and purpose, leveraging your soul's gifts and talents? There are eight different soul energies every soul has access to. These eight soul energies are divine compassion, divine creation, divine order, divine love, divine self-expression, divine truth, divine power, and divine wisdom. Imagine a pie with eight pieces. Mm, kind of like a pizza sounds like to me. Depending on the energies you are most abundant in, you have eight slices with very different sizes. Usually there is one piece of pie that's dominating the entire cake that can take up to 50% of the spectrum. That's your primary soul energy. That's the energy you are most abundant in. That's the energy that determines what you are made of energetically. Some souls also have a secondary soul energy, another big piece of the soul energy pie. And then the six remaining energies have smaller portions. Now let's have a look at these soul energies. And what the characteristics are, I will give you a few keywords here for each soul energy. If you are interested in more, please 
you know, register because they're trying to sell you some shit. Now, I'm not on here to sell you what they're trying to sell you, but I do like to cite where I got the information from because I'm not stealing their shit. Okay, so first, divine compassion, highly compassionate, tolerant, unconditional love in various areas such as children, hospice care, animals, environmental issues. Point two, other focus tend to overgive, may try to help from a place of lack. Put the oxygen mask on first before you help your children is a principle of uh, divinely compassionate souls, it should say, should apply to protect themselves. The next one is divine creation. It's manifesting and building at the physical level. Builders enjoying creating something that lasts. Divine order. Energies of balance, harmony, beauty, law, perfection, and peace. A sense of fairness, law, and karma. Divine love. Healing gift of loving, acceptance, and non-judgment. Many healers have divine love as their primary soul energy may end up overgiving, may end up depleted. Divine self-expression, communication experts, love language, and written and spoken word inspire people. The need to talk things through. Divine truth, personal, highly subjective truth, intuitive, clairvoyance, human lie detectors. Diplomacy is their challenge. Divine power, divine creators and manifestors. Freedom of choice is key. They move fast, natural leaders and entrepreneurs, divine wisdom, live in alignment with universal law, concise, profound, reasonable, principle-based logic over emotionality. Your primary soul energy describes what your soul is made up of. Identifying your soul profile. Okay, so the rest of this is probably geared towards the cell. So those were the eight soul energies that this thing described. And I specifically chose that because I like to describe and help people understand their souls. Because if you can understand your soul and the mindset and the characteristics of who you are, then that can help you to understand uncover and unlock your purpose that can help you to be more balanced it can help you to be more direct and more sound in your judgment and making decisions when you think about those energies a lot of times when people are misused abused taken advantage of or taken for granted they begin to stifle their own growth. They begin to minimize their spiritual qualities and maximize their guards and their defense mechanisms. And within doing that, we see the ego rise. A lot of times ego comes from the need of protecting yourself, the need for being guarded. A lot of times the ego and the evil comes from being mistreated again. And when you begin to display from learned behavior, defense mechanisms, and the way that you guard your life, it really changes everything else. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you, when you begin to need to operate in survival mode, your ego is at its highest and not because of selfish reasons, but because of self-preservation. So the more that we have to preserve ourselves, the more that we operate from ego, instead of our temple and when we operate from our temple instead of our ego then we consider other we love better we exhibit anointing state of mind i want to say christ likeness but when i say christ i am using christ as the title for the anointing in which exalts and exhilarates love peace when you say love when you really define love you eliminate the need to criticize and categorize anything else because love encompasses all good things. Love also encompasses the protection, encompasses security, it encompasses all the defense mechanisms also because in order to love, there has to be discipline. In order to love, there has to be self-control. In order to love, there has to be an energy field around you that is really God's hedge of protection as well as love, peace, light, and all those other things. So in regards to this being part three of the other videos and keeping it in alignment with that, 
the more we understand our own energy, our own presence, our own wherewithal within God, because if God created us in his image, if God knew us from beginning to end, then there is nothing that we can do that God did not understand or know that we were going to come in contact with. Now, in regards to spirituality and things in that nature, this is why people are capable of being prophetic and having dreams because God is able to show you and show others, myself included, things that are likely to happen once a person chooses a certain path. Now, there is the ability to change what will happen based on the strength and the decisions of each individual, but only God within that person, the more you connect with God, the more God's light shine within you. The more God's light shines within you, the more intuitively accurate you are, the more in alignment you are with your purpose, the more you are in awareness of what you're created to do and what you're supposed to be. And when you begin to exalt that, you create a new atmosphere. So in essence of the very first video, when you begin to remove the strongholds of religion and you really be able to connect your soul to God's fullness and the light of God at its rawest, unfiltered essence, then you will begin to be able to walk in the light of your blessedness. You will be able to understand the truth outside of religion. But as long as you have that religious wool over your eyes, then you will only see what is allowed to be shown to you. So in order for sheep to see, the shepherd has to take the wool from over their eyes and usually use clippers, scissors or something to cut around their eyes so that they can see. It's almost like having a, a Shih Tzu dog or one of those dogs that grow a lot of hair. And if you don't get the hair out of their face, they ain't going to be able to see shit. That's how it is with sheep. So you have to take the wool from over their eyes in order for them to see. So when you remove religion, it's like removing the wool from over your eyes. It's nothing wrong with the wool being there. Your ass just can't see shit. Religion is not bad. It is. For real, for real, it is bad. <laughs> because it is muffling your relationship with God. It's the interference of your communication with the creator of your being. So religion is like interference that I described in the last video of the phone. So when landlines used to be a thing, there used to be interference. So you could pick up the phone and you could hear somebody's conversation. You could try to hang up and it, their line has crossed with your lines. I experienced this a couple of weeks ago. I actually did a video of it because I was like, what in the world? I didn't think that this could happen on cell phones. But that is what religion is. Religion is the interference, the filter, the thing that muffles and takes place in place of the authentic relationship that you are supposed to create. And it does that by giving you all of these false impressions of spiritual matters and non-spiritual matters even, and then making you believe that they are either good or evil, bad or good, divine or hellish, I guess, if that's what you want to call it. But I started this video two videos ago because I was listening to the video where Kanye was talking about how evil music is, and it immediately made me think, of the African culture and the indigenous nature in which soul rhythm and music really stems and comes from. And it was like, damn, that's just another way of them undermining cultural things that are beyond their ability to create. If you really think about Romans and the Europeans that created religion, and where it all starts from, the whole thing was to undercut the Egyptians. Think about history. Think about the realities of life. Think about the cultural heritage that was in existence before religion came to play and everything that was done to stop God's people from having God's light in their life in the maximus and most gracious way. And when you begin to think about that, then the truth really begins to set you free because you will begin to see that a lot of things that were deemed evil, it's to turn us against 
our own interdivinity, our own interconnectivity with the spirit of God's love and with who God created us to be. And when you begin to do that, if you can muffle that, if you can get a middleman in there, which would be two or three middlemen when you get, okay, you got Jesus, but Jesus came from King James and then King James got his narrative from whoever gave him the stories of the people that he never met. So now the interference that you think is, you know, this is God's word is God's word told forth fifth person because Jesus didn't know King James. King James didn't know Jesus. They wasn't even in the same time frame, nor was Peter, Paul, or any other uh, of the 12 apostles. But if they give you that narrative, which really is in alignment with historical facts as far as when you think about Judas and um, the way he sold out Jesus is no different than when you think about the indigenous person that was taken to Europe that began to be friend or was befriended by the Europeans. And then he, that person and or his family was up under the impression that the Europeans was going to be helping the indigenous people. And he brought them here and basically, quote unquote, sold them out, but did not realize what he was selling them out into. And that is how the colonizers came in and stole the land. But you know what's in alignment with that? The same way that Judas sold out Jesus. It was somebody that they was trusted. It was somebody, you know what I'm saying, that was supposed to be good. And he went to them thinking that he was going to get something that, that wasn't even available to him, not through them. And he sold out the very person that was thought to be, you know, the savior of the world. That's the same way when you think about Joseph and his brothers, um, when you think about Abraham and Lot, when you, like every story in the Bible, honestly and truly depicts a people who were sold out to another people and then were basically exploited for real, for real. That's the best way to explain it. And it's a, a continuous history of that exploitation throughout cultural bands of people and you know who is always left on top the people that look white right <laughs> i'm just saying and i'm not saying that all white people are bad because listen when i've listened to this book that i'm reading when i go on my walks and when i'm around here you know doing what i need to do of john brown john brown was a thorough ass white man who was like nah we ain't for all that slavery shit you ain't gonna treat these black people worse than you treat your own person because that's not the way that it's supposed to be and he died fighting for the freedom of black people so all white people ain't you know what i'm saying evil i, I know that a lot of um there are some black religions as well as black extremists that want you to believe that all white people are horrible, evil people. But there were white people that fought for black people freedom that, you know what I'm saying, John Brown in particular was not with none of that damn slavery shit. He was not with treating people poorly and, and all of that shit. He was, that was not his shit. And I'm going to try to wrap it up here because my daughter had came in and she had wanted something and I don't know what she had wanted. And I'm done. That's it. I've completed and said everything and more than what I had planned on saying. This was supposed to be a 20 minute video and it turned into three parts. But I hope that it blessed you in your soul, heart and in your mind, spirit. And it begins to awaken you to wanting to know the truth. The Bible says that the truth will set you free and that most people perish from the lack of knowledge. So I pray that you learn the truth eventually, that you seek truth out, that you begin to know more so that you can do more so that you will not perish and that you will live forevermore. God bless. Have a great day. I love you. I mean it. Bye. Speaking Freedom presents Good Head Group providing advanced spiritual studies and personal developmental insight brought to you by Love Gang and Speaking Freedom. We look forward to helping you grow in all the areas of your life. We hope that you find all the information needed for your growth. God bless. Please listen to all disclaimers provided. If you are currently under physician's care, please maintain that relationship. This is not intended to stop your current treatment plan. If you need physician care, please seek out medical attention. 
Please note, all results are based on the individual's ability to adapt and adjust to any given environment and situation. We are not responsible for your results at Speaking Freedom. The Life Enhancement Coaches at Speaking Freedom provide information to help you grow. You are responsible for maintaining that growth, taking on and then applying the information to your individual life as you deem needed and necessary. This may contain and explain explicit content. Please use parental discretion. For best results, you will need an open mind, the ability to research, and a balanced lifestyle. Please join us daily for your inspiration and motivation. We have the entire world to offer you at your fingertips. Your life enhancement coaching specialist. Thank you for choosing us to assist you in accomplishing your personal and professional goals. And have a beautiful day. In love, we trust. This is brought to you by Good Head Group, Love Gang, and Speaking Freedom. We thank God for you, and we love you. Hi, I'm Casey. Dr. Casey, to be exact. Owner of Speaking Freedom, LLC, Love Gang, and Good Head Group, LLC. I am also a certified life coach and host of Speaking Freedom Radio and TV. Although I have recently became an ordained minister, please be aware that I am still me, raw and uncut the way God made me and allowed life to shape me. I pray and expect God to use me for people who can receive the way I communicate as well as my delivery. I am not for those who are already saved, religious, or super deep. I am for the leaders, hustlers, and street influencers around the world, including pimps, killers, drug dealers, and working girls. I am sharing my experiences and perspective to help someone be inspired to be better. And for those who can identify with the various aspects of my mindset. My mindset alone does not determine the status of any active connections or current relationships that have not already been specifically addressed. Additionally, these recordings should not be taken personally if I have not already spoken to you about the topic or expressed that I have an issue. These recordings are a part of my life's work to document my experience, perspective, and to see how life has shaped me. My plan in using my stories publicly and socially is to encourage growth in those who can identify with the experiences and find inspiration in my life to heal and overcome the path that they've been set on, no matter what they face as according to the purpose of their soul until healing takes place. Despite the experiences that I may have had with any person, sometimes known and unknown, I hold no grudges, no no hate, no bitterness, or any other ill feelings against anyone. I pray that your life is whole and very fruitful. I forgive you as I hope that you forgive me if I have wronged you or anyone that you know or anyone who listens to me. I pray that you have peace and extend the same grace to others. I have love for everyone, especially on a human level, despite flaws or experiences. But that doesn't mean that I will associate or be close to every human that I know or meet. I've experienced a very eventful life and truly believe that my mindset and story based on experiences could help those who identify with how I think and are looking for inspiration to grow further, go beyond hurt, and be great. I pray that these recordings bless you and your soul in every way and whatever way God has intended. Sending love and light to all. Thanks for listening. Achieve your dreams.